means that the number one pick in the 2021 NBA draft goes to the Detroit Pistons. Who's got the number one pick in this year's Detroit. draft? Who's got the number one pick in this year's draft? Basketball! Select Isaiah Stewart. The Detroit Pistons select Killian Hayes. Sadiq, that was absolutely sensational. I don't know what went into that process. I met the criteria to be selected, but I wasn't. From long range. Oh! Yes! Yes! Detroit Basketball! Pistons fans, welcome back to another edition of the Palace of Pistons podcast. I'm your host for this week, Jasper Apollonia. Fortunately, Mike Angelano is not with us. Uh, he does have finals. But we do have, as always, our fearless leader and comrade in arms, Aaron Johnson. Aaron, how are you today? Um, wow. I mean, just another exciting week to talk about these wonderful Detroit Pistons. Like, uh, yes, let's do it. Never a dull moment, huh? And certainly there weren't any dull moments last night. Uh, as we're recording this, this is a uh, Tuesday. And the Pistons, just the night before, blew an 18-point lead to the well, you, you can't really call them lowly because you're even lower than they are, to the Oklahoma City Thunder, uh, fresh off of a, what was it, 73-point loss to the Memphis Grizzlies, the largest margin of defeat in NBA history for the Oklahoma City Thunder. They come back, their next game is against the Detroit Pistons, and what do they do but they come back from 18 down and not only come back, but they win the game, and not only win the game, but they win it by 11. Aaron, a 29-point swing for the Pistons last night. Um, I, this is after a week of, of course, more losses. Uh, they dropped games to Portland. They gave, dropped games to Phoenix. Uh, both closer, believe it or not, in the end than this one was, which doesn't really inspire a whole lot of confidence now, does it? No, I mean, this is uh, – yesterday's loss was just – you put it under a microscope and you could really see just such lack of desire to to win a game. I mean, the Oklahoma City Thunder coming off a 73-point loss, a team that is just as bad, if not worse, than the Pistons, went out there – dug themselves in the hole, but they wanted the game so much that they found a way to come back starting in the third quarter, but ultimately in the fourth quarter and found a way to swing the game and beat the Pistons after being down by 18 points in the second half. I mean, this is a Pistons team that not only lacks talent, but supposedly lacks heart, effort, desire, those things that like, I don't know, good teams have and, something that Dwayne Casey coach teams tend to usually have. It's something that the Pistons last year had. They were a team that even though they were not good, they quite frankly sucked last year. They still came out every night and scrapped and clawed their way through games and found themselves in it at the end because they fought hard. It was their style of play, not their talent. And this year they are somehow playing less talented and they are absolutely playing with less heart, less desire, less competitiveness. Their quote-unquote, as Dwayne Casey likes to use the term, compete level is all the way down. And it's really just, I guess, disappointing. I mean, I sound like a CYO basketball coach talking about his, you know, like third and fourth graders or whatever. I don't know. It's just like – there are lows for a very bad team. And then there are what happened last night to the Detroit Pistons. And man, I, I it, that was yeah. just awful. It, it was just absolutely awful. Aaron it's yeah, I, I can't agree more. It was really bad. Of course uh, they did have uh, Oklahoma city. That is did have SGA back Shai Gilgis Alexander uh, who apparently should be in the running for MVP since he's worth an 84-point swing for the Oklahoma City Thunder on a game-to-game -game basis. Um, but the numbers were 
we're awful. Uh, Detroit really had a great first half. I, I don't want to come out and say that, you know, they were terrible for the whole game because they weren't. There's a reason they did have an 18 point lead at one point. Um, Kate Cunningham played very well yesterday, probably up there as one of his best games as a piston uh, set a career high in points with 28, 11 rebounds, five assists. He was really, really good yesterday, but I mean, the second half stats don't lie. Uh, the Pistons got outscored by 20 points in the fourth. They gave up 42 points in that quarter. And guess how many, just guess how many shots Oklahoma City missed in that entire fourth quarter. 12 minutes of play, Aaron. How many shots did they miss? They scored 42 points. They put up a lot of shots. They, they probably could have missed many, right? I mean, I'm going to go with like six. Yeah. Uh, try one. Oh, one. Oklahoma City missed one shot in the fourth quarter, Aaron. It was horrible. Uh, but if you had bet on that result, you would have been a very rich man. Which brings us to our first sponsor for today, Bet Online. Bet Online, they're back and better than ever. A new web interface for the start of basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Unfortunately, Aaron, we're starting to get into more than just the start of basketball season, and the Pistons still stink. But Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code. Believe 50, that's B-L-E-A-V-5-0, to receive your welcome bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. Now, see, Aaron, I can't do the, the transitions quite as well as Mike. I, I think I still need a little bit more help on that. But bet online, if I had bet on, on the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder to come back yesterday, I would have been a very, very happy man. Unfortunately, I didn't. So I was a very, very sad man. Um, I mean, really, what else is there to say about that game last night, Aaron? I, I, I We could go on for hours, but it's almost – seems like an exercise in futility at this point, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I guess the only good thing is, like, Kate Cunningham continues to show different reasons, game in and game out, why he's that guy. I mean, another big night for him, 28 points, double-double, 28, 11 rebounds, three assists, four assists, made six three-pointers. I mean, this was a guy that, again, did it all for the Pistons, and – couldn't get enough help against the lowly Thunder. Um, I, I, yeah. I think we're seeing from Cade continues to show, like, good things are coming. But, man, the rest of the stuff going on is just not going to cut it. Well, Aaron, one of the few Pistons who was matching Cade for shot for shot in that first half, and just like the rest of the team, fell apart in the second half, was – the much maligned, unfortunately, Sadiq Bay, uh, you know, came out firing, was excellent in the first half, had 13 points at the break. Unfortunately, after that, all he did was miss all but one shot the rest of the way. He finished with 15 points on five of 16 shooting, three of eight from three point range. And that's after starting the game, three of four from three point range. He didn't hit another three the rest of the way. It was yet another struggle for Sadiq Bay, and look, the whole season has been a struggle for him. His numbers are down across the board. I feel like we talk about this every single week because, you know, he is supposed to be one of the brighter spots on this team. I mean, look, he's their third, he's their second highest minutes getter of any player uh, for the Pistons this year, and he's shooting 35, 29, 75 splits from the floor. Um, I, I mean, just frankly, he's not getting it done right now. Aaron, what do you think the answer is with Sadiq Bay? Do you bench him? Do you trade him? Um, if you followed me online, you know that I have kind of been a proponent of saying, look, if the Pistons are going to be getting down in games big, 
the guy who should be replacing Sadiq Bey and playing next to the starters should be Frank Jackson. I don't know how you feel about that, Aaron. What are you thinking at this point in time? Because honestly, an answer needs to come soon. They can't continue to, to play him in this sort of way. Yeah. The thing is, Sadiq Bey started off the season and he actually was playing rather well up until when Kate Cunningham came back. And I think he was in such in a much more prominent role. He was getting the ball in his hands more. And once Kate Cunningham returned, the ball came out of his hands. He was asked to do things in quicker bursts. Later in the shot clock, they asked him, put the ball on the deck once we get it to you in a post up. There were less plays being called for Sadiq Bay, and there was less opportunity for him to just like get himself involved. It didn't always have to be scoring. I mean, he had games at the beginning of the year where he was getting, you know, four, five, six assists and he was getting double digit rebounds, like other things to get himself into the game. And once Kate Cunningham came back, it just changed for him. And it's been really bad ever since. And the shooting has not come back. We expect everyone was said, just give this. Give it time. Give it time. The shooting will find itself. He shot the ball very well last year. And you can only hold on to that hope for so long. And you can only allow a guy to play such a prominent role on your team while continuing to shoot as bad as he has for so long. So I, I think his move to the bench would probably be best suited for Bay. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve to be in the starting lineup, but that's something that I think he has to earn again. He needs to a change of scenery right now and maybe having him start the game on the bench will hopefully open something up for him to be more of a leader in the second unit. Maybe just seeing the game get started will do something for him because after those first couple of minutes, that first stretch of the first quarter for him yesterday where he made a couple shots ever since he struggled and he, that was more of the same of the city Bay that, we have come to see so far this season and the Pistons just can't continue to afford that from a guy that had such a promising rookie year, made the all rookie team was getting all rookie votes. Like there is a future where Sadiq Bay is a good player in this league, but it's not going to happen with the way he's playing this year. And the Pistons can't continue to afford to allow, to allow a guy that has been essentially a black hole for them on offense. to continue to take double digit shots a game while starting for them. I think they need to give a guy a, a different look, get a guy out there that's shooting the ball a little bit better right now, give the starters some more spacing, give the starters more guys to kick the ball out to that can knock down shots as that's what they need. They need Sadiq Bay as much as they need him to do some other things outside of just being the spot-up shooter that he was last year. They need guys that can hit spot-up shot. They, they need guys that can score off the dribble and that's something that Frank Jackson has gotten better. At. He was another guy that started off the season rather slow, but he started to pick it up as of late. So I think trying to ride some sort of hot hand, whoever's got it on a given night, uh, you have to try something else. You're the worst team in basketball. You're four and 19. You have a putrid rec record and nothing is changing from the coaching staff down. Nothing is changing. So there's absolutely changes that have to be made. And I think Sadiq Bey is, is where they need to start. Yeah. And Aaron, one of the arguments that you can make in favor of Sadiq Bey is, ah, oh, well, you know, he just needs more, more time, more time. Well, the fact of the matter is he's played 40% of the minutes that he played in all of last year. He's almost at 800 minutes right now. He played 1,900 minutes all last season. So it's not like he hasn't been out there for an appreciable amount of time. Like I said, he's playing 32 minutes a game. That's more minutes per game than Cade Cunningham. Like, <laughs> it's not like he's not getting the opportunities here. Uh, he is shooting 13.1 shots per game. Again, that's third of any piston. So the opportunities have been there for Sadiq Bey. And you're totally right. He was better at the beginning of the season. And he's faded as time has gone on. And with the reemergence of Cade Cunningham into the starting lineup coming off of that injury, which is almost counterintuitive, isn't it? Because the thing with Sadiq was you expected him to struggle because, okay, he's being asked to do too much on the floor, but you would think with somebody like Kate Cunningham, who's an excellent distributor, somebody who is going to take a lot of the playmaking load, a lot of the 
focus of the defense off of Sadiq Bay. You'd think that that would just make things easier for him, give him more of the ability to take those spot up threes. But look, even last night, you saw it. His, his confidence in his shot is simply not there. You know, they had a chance at the end of the game. I believe it was like the third to last, second to last shot, something like that. They were still in it. And Sadiq Bey gets a gets the ball at the top of the key. Uh, I'm sorry, at the top of the three-point line, catches it, has an open shot, and dribbles sideways into like an off-balance three that he bricks. And, and you're just thinking to yourself, how are you still doing this? This is your second year in the league. You should know better than that by now, period. And I don't understand why you would turn down the better shot to take a worse shot. And it's frustrating because it's the same type of shots and the same type of mistakes he's been making all season. So, yeah, I'm with you on this. Look, if Hamadou Diallo needed a a short stint on the bench to get his mind right, I don't see why Sadiq Bey should be, you know, free of the same uh, coaching decisions. It, I, he hasn't shown me anything so far this season that makes me believe otherwise. So, yeah, I mean, nice start to the season. Uh, but unfortunately, Sadiq has faded as time has gone on. But you know what won't fade as time goes on, Aaron? Our second sponsor, Lightbox. Say goodbye to dull gifts. Lightbox lab-grown diamonds are the brightest gift of the year. And trust me, folks. They will stay bright from game one through game 82. Using cutting edge technology and innovative techniques, they've cracked the science of sparkle, creating the highest quality lab grown diamonds you can find at a light, light price, $800 per carat. They have the same exact chemical makeup as natural diamonds, but are grown in a lab. Because of their process, they can create stones and blush pink and beautiful blue, as well as, well, classic white. Lightbox lab-grown diamonds are the gift they'll never want to take off, priced so they won't have to. They really do make just about any outfit sparkle. Visit lightboxjewelry.com to add sparkle to your holiday shopping. That's lightboxjewelry.com. Lightbox diamonds, never a dull moment. Well, Aaron, another team that's uh, experiencing some dull moments of their own are the Indiana Pacers. And that's going to bring us to our second topic today. Today it comes out, the Indiana Pacers are open to accepting trade offers for three of their biggest players, Karis LeVert, Miles Turner, and of course, DeMontis Sabonis. So I have to ask you, this this does bring the question, obviously the Pistons are in no better place to contend than the Pacers are, but Should they be interested in any of those three guys? What would you be willing to give up? And really, should the Pistons even be interested in any of that? Is this too soon to be looking to trade some of your young pieces for a more established star? Yeah, so this is a good question. And it's probably my favorite topic of the show today. Um, Well, you should know, Aaron, you wrote it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Note to the editor. Um, (laughs) I'm most intrigued by Karis LeVert and Miles Turner. Um, that being said, the Manus Sabonis is probably the best player out of the three, but in terms of fit and in terms of need, I think Turner and LeVert present a couple different things that would be rather valuable for Detroit. And I'll start with Turner because I think I would prefer him most. Um, this is a guy that obviously can shoot the ball He's a stretch the floor type big offensively who is an elite defender on the other side of the floor, elite shot blocking skills. Or you are talking about an all NBA level or excuse me, all defensive team level defender. And that is intriguing to me because the Pistons, while Isaiah Stewart tries, I just think he's always going to be limited by he, he's six, eight, He's not super long. It's not super, super big. He is a good interior defender, but when you're talking about adding a guy that's already cemented himself as a stretch, stretch big, can score against mismatches down low, and is already proving as an elite defender, that is something that intrigues me. The question... Well, Aaron, 
my my question is, do you think those those two guys can play together? Because that's a big thing for me. Selling point with Turner is, you know, I, I've, we've seen him with Sabonis before. I think if you move Stewart to the four, I, I don't see a reason why you can't play him and Turner together. And, and yeah. that would solve a lot of issues, I think, for for this team. It, w- it would. I just don't even know if that's how I'd want it to play out. Like, I think I'd, I'd be okay with either A, giving Stewart up in the deal, or B, moving Stewart to the bench. I don't know. I guess I've just really cooled off on how much I believe in Isaiah Stewart's role moving forward. Um, and that's why I think Turner has intrigued me the most, just because when I'm – foreseeing how this Pistons team looks down the line when they are a playoff team. I don't know if I still believe that Isaiah Stewart is the starting center of that team or the starting power forward. Okay, Aaron. So let's say Indiana comes that, to you. Okay, Aaron sounded like it. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm genuinely asking. So my, my question is if. Okay, if, Aaron, why should I kill you? No, 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 not really. Cause I, I don't think you're saying anything wrong here. If, if the Pacers come to you and they say, look, what it's going to take for Turner is Isaiah Stewart, Sadiq Bay, and a lottery-protected 2024 first-rounder. What are you saying back to that? I don't know. I, or, or let's say it's one of – Or I, let's say it's one of Sadiq or Stewart and – an unprotected 2023 first rounder. How about that? See, I don't want to, I, I don't think the Pistons should be giving up their first rounders for these next couple of years because they're not a winning ball club right now. And if they bet on themselves to be one and don't end up being one, these drafts are supposed to have some pretty big names. It's true, but I'm still, of course I, Look, I'm with you. I'm not quite sure that the teams necessarily have the assets to make it work one-to-one. I think what is more likely, if anything, and and to be clear, I don't think that the Pistons are ultimately going to be able to swing a trade or necessarily even want to swing a trade for any of those three guys. But for me, the most likely option is a three-team trade where Jeremy Grant goes to somebody else Um they ended up saying sending you know something to the uh, the the Pacers or say perhaps the Pistons send Stewart Grant uh, get back something from a third team and then also get Miles Turner. I could see that happening. I, I, it's hard for me to really necessarily, yeah, justify exactly what you're saying, which is sending away unprotected first rounders even in two years when you're planning on contending. That being said, Miles Turner is signed through next year. So, you know, you're going to get a first rounder this year. You're going to combine them with Miles Turner, Kate Cunningham, um, maybe Jeremy Grant, uh, and whatever else you're going to have in that front court. You know, I think that that is something that's very intriguing. I don't think you're a lottery team if you have that kind of, of a team. Um, I think you're probably a playoff squad. So, I would consider maybe moving that 2023 first rounder. I think that I could definitely be talked into that. Um, But if you do that, you are definitely thinking with a best case scenario in mind, because boy, if that's another lottery pick, well, I mean, a lot of things have gone wrong. If that is another lottery pick, am I right? Yeah. And I just going back to, the best scenario. Like, I don't know when this Pistons team is a playoff team next. Like, yes, they are going to have another lottery pick and it should be pretty darn high by the looks of it. It should be a pretty darn good pick, but honestly, outside of Paulo, I'm rather unmoved by the top of the draft class as of now. And what the Pistons really need is an interior big. And I don't think they're getting that in this draft. When you look at the top bigs, in that are going to be available i don't think they're getting a a real difference maker there and like i said outside of paulo i don't know if there's anyone that really jumps off the board to me so yeah miles turner steps into that but again like you still have to build out the rest of your roster essentially and 
if you're not giving up Jeremy Grant, you're giving up probably Sadiq Bay, Isaiah Stewart, maybe Killian Hayes. Like you're talking about different young guys on this roster. I don't know. I just feel like a trade for them, really any of these guys doesn't really move the needle and they're not necessarily good enough players outside of a Sabonis to where you can move a multiple young players or picks together and it really matter. Like, yes, yeah, so a bonus would be good on this team, but I just feel like they need more like fit type pieces rather than just a talent like him. I don't know. They, cause they certainly, I, I, I don't, don't know, man, this, really this, good. this team needs some talent this period. Team needs a whole lot of things. <laughs> I, I just, I just don't know if any of these guys really do anything for me. Like they're all good players. They would all absolutely help the Pistons. But when I envision this team down the line, I don't know if I can really envision them with any of these players. I don't know. I, I, I think about it, you know, in terms of Miles Turner, I think that he solves a lot of problems on this Pistons team. Primarily, um, you know, he's not a great pick and roll player. He's more of a pick and pop player. Uh, sort of like a, a the richest man on earth's Kelly Olynyk, um, offensively only. I mean, there's no comparison between the two defensively, of course. But um, you know, I, I think that he would solve a lot of their issues when it comes to Cade and Killian not necessarily having the bigs to pass to and combine with in in pick and roll. I think he solves a lot of issues there. I think he solves a lot of issues with their shooting. I mean, he is a forty percent shooter. He's a really good shooter especially for a big man. And I think he also helps you a lot with rim protection, which is a really big issue for this Pistons team. You know, he's also under contract for next year and you do have the money to extend him. So it's not like it's a short-term rental necessarily. And then it also puts you into a position where I think right now, if you're looking at the draft, the Pistons almost have to hope that one of Chet or Paolo falls to them. They need a big man so desperately and if you have miles turner then i think what you can also do is kind of more than look at somebody like a jabari smith a more perhaps high upside player who is more of a wing power forward type and at that point i look at it and you're really putting together a complete roster uh one that really makes sense in my opinion so yeah there's obviously upside and downside there's a you know, yeah. Turner's not a perfect player by any means himself. So I got a grand scheme question for you. Just since mm. we're talking about trades and we're talking about different players and stuff. Who on this roster is untouchable or like Cade? Okay. Is it just Cade to you? Like, are yes. you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I, and nobody wants to be that guy that says, oh, we should get rid of this young player that hasn't been great and ends up popping off in a couple of years. Nobody wants to be that guy. But let's be real. Like, <laughs> these are young players. None of them have established themselves as anything special at this point in their NBA careers other than Cade. So, yeah, nobody's untouchable. Yeah, just to kind of move this into – uh a broader discussion about the, the Pistons roster construction. I, mm. I'm i very open to the idea of the Pistons being willing to take a different approach and trying to find some new talent for this team. Like, I, I just don't see outside of Cade guys that are for sure going to be winning basketball playing level starters. Like, I don't know if any of Killian Hayes, Sadiq Bey, or Isaiah Stewart are that. I think Jeremy Grant is, but I think he's in too big of a role right now. There's not enough talent surrounding him. And then obviously on the bench, there's nothing special. Like Corey Joseph and, you know, Frank Jackson, Josh Jackson, like those guys are a dime a dozen in the league. So, yeah, I mean, look, if you trade for Miles Turner, he steps onto this roster and is immediately, even if, somehow you didn't trade anyone who's currently on the roster. You trade my, you get miles Turner. He walks in the door. He is instantly at least the third most talented player on that roster. Like if, Sadiq, if one of Sadiq Bay, Killian Hayes, or, you know, Isaiah Stewart 
turns into a Miles Turner level player, like congratulations. That's pretty much the the best case scenario, right? For any of those guys right now. Yeah, I just yeah, it's it's gotten really bleak out here, hasn't it? Yes, sir. We are having a real bad time. <laughs> <laughs> it is horrible, my man. I mean, look, yeah, I mean, Jeremy Grant is around that same level of player as, as Miles Turner, but I look at the rest of the roster and I say, I mean, I think Killian could be like a guard version kind of of Miles Turner, if that makes sense. Like They actually are an really elite similar. I, it, yeah, it, I mean, it, obviously it, they're totally different players, but in terms of like what they do for your team, not dissimilar at all, right? Neither wants to or tries to shoot the ball a lot. Mm-hmm. They both make immense impact at their position defensively. They both have a rather quiet demeanor. They they can be described as somewhat soft offensively, I think. Yep. And mm-hmm. I think everyone always expects that they're going to be better. Hopefully. Hopefully with Killian. Uh, with Miles Turner, he is kind of what he is at this point. But right. But I'm saying like I'm saying, like as he, you know, was younger, like I like it was always supposed to be a big next year for Miles Turner where he becomes that 15 and 10 and then 20 and 10 big, and it never really yeah. happened. And I don't know, I feel like we might be seeing like that same kind of thing with Killian, where I don't sure. know if the scoring is ever really going to come around the way is desired well we'll see i mean last night that first half i mean of course the second half was a disaster for killian again unfortunately but in the first half he was really good like very useful offensively and it is really just phenomenal yeah he was phenomenal he was really good so i mean look it's we're just at the point right now where this team needs they need talent period and there are no sacred cows on this roster outside of Cade Cunningham. Um, other than that, like, yeah, you, you're what you need to do right now as a GM, if you're Troy Weaver, is get talent on this team, however you can. It, it doesn't even really matter because this roster is just barren, totally barren. Because when Cade Cunningham can have the best game of his career so far and you know, Jeremy Grant didn't exactly play horribly. I, I thought he was okay. Uh, you know, nine for 16, 20 points, six rebounds, five assists. He did all right, but they couldn't do anything else in the second half. No one else could step up. And until they get at least a third scorer on this team, which was, I believe, what Sadiq Bey was supposed to be, they're just not going to really be able to do anything. So that's that's all I have on the, on the Pacers. And... Um, at this point, I think, Aaron, we're just looking forward to when will the next Pistons win come? Because I know that both Thunder fans and Pistons fans had circled that game as the one where they went, all right, things have been horrible, but at least we can win this one. And Thunder fans came away happy last night. Pistons fans did not. Looking at the schedule coming up, Aaron, where do you see the Pistons' next win coming? Because as of right now, they have lost their last what is it, 11 games? Oh, goodness. 11 games straight. It, I don't know. Look at their schedule. and So, they, yeah, here's what, here's what we have coming up, Aaron. Washington, first Washington at home, at New Orleans, Brooklyn at home, at Chicago, at Indiana, Houston at home. That is their next six games. You would think that the Pelicans and Rockets games are – are winnable games the problem is the pistons just lost their most winnable game they just lost their most winnable game i mean I, it really doesn't matter that shea gilgis alexander played and came back and josh giddy came back that doesn't matter the thunder were still horrible they had still lost a lot of games and like that was a very good opportunity now you look at a team like the rockets who yeah you beat them earlier this year but they're on the, what a six game winning streak Without yep. Jalen Green, Christian Wood, who was deemed not talented enough, not not desired enough to come back to the Pistons, to be brought back to the Pistons, is playing like an all-star. And then it's like, what, maybe you get the Pacers? 
I, I don't know. You get do you get the Pelicans on Friday? They just picked up a win. Well, I, you know this might this might be crazy, but I actually think they could win their next one against Washington. The Wizards are floundering a little bit right now. They've lost, you know, four of their last five, uh, 10 of their last 15 games. That's a team that's a little bit in flux right now. That's, that's kind of struggling to find their identity. So as crazy as that sounds, I actually think the Washington game is winnable. I definitely think the new Orleans game is winnable. Um, (laughs) I'm looking at ticket prices for that new Orleans Pelicans game right now. Um, They are going for $2 on StubHub. (laughs) Dude, that's in New Orleans, but that game was you can Most you can probably yeah, twenty five. You can folks, if you are listening to this podcast and you live in New Orleans, you can go watch the Pistons play the New Orleans Pelicans for less than the price of a McChicken. So <laughs> congratulations! It costs more. And to you know what? Here's the basketball. thing, though. I'm sorry. It costs more to get into a high school basketball game. <laughs> yeah, I, it does. I was going to say, though, eating a McChicken might actually be better for your health than watching the Pelicans play the Pistons. So <laughs> unreal, man. It's yeah, it's ugly. Um, but I do think that in this in these next six games, I actually do think there is possibility for a win, maybe even two. There are some teams that are that are obviously not in a good place. Washington's not in a great place. New Orleans is not in a great place. Houston. Yes, they've won six, but they do stink. Um, and the Pistons have already beaten them before on the road. Um, and of course, Indiana is, is a team very much in flux as well. Uh, they're basically just trying to sell off everything with a pulse. So that's not a great look for that organization that has been very much prone to some blowups this year. Oh man, Aaron, uh, this has been another, another ugly one. I, I can't blame Mike for skipping out on us. Poor guy has to listen to us whine every single week. Meanwhile, his beloved Cavaliers are tearing it up again. Oh, how I hate him. Oh, how I hate him so. Aaron, that's all I have for this week. Do you have any last thoughts before before we leave these fine folks? I mean, we'll see. We'll see what we'll see where we're at in a week, right? I mean, the Pistons got well, they'll have play at least three games before our next podcast. Yep. Probably closer to four. You know, targeted a, a Wednesday record date next week after the the Bulls game, and we'll see. I mean, who knows? The Pistons might like end up beating the Bulls, and we'll be talking about how this team has a chance to make the play in still. And <laughs> it'll be like Lions fans, you know, one in ten. Time to go on that. Time to go on a winning streak. Oh my god, that was so <laughs> sneak <pathetic>. in. <laughs> Lions fans are so pathetic. Oh, I know. Although, then again, we are rooting for the Pistons, Aaron. So those in glass houses and all that. Um, (laughs) At least the Pistons have been good, well, within our parents' lifetimes, at very least. So uh, Lions fans can't quite say the same. Just Aaron, that is all I have. Final shout-outs. Should have some good content coming up soon. Hoping to have a story up on palaceofpistons.com with – a member of the Pistons. So got to keep a lookout for that. Been at a couple cruise games. I'll be there tomorrow night. So the date this actually goes live. So what today's Tuesday. So tomorrow, Wednesday, I'll be there Wednesday night for the cruise game was there earlier today on Tuesday for their game. They picked up a win. Saw Brandon Knight, a Piston legend in action. He dapped up Troy Weaver. So maybe some help on the way coming soon for the Pistons. He had 24. He played well. I still think he's, an NBA player. He, he still could give you 15 minutes a night, I think, but uh, just about anyone could give you 15 minutes a night on this Pistons roster. That's very true. That, that's very true. But <laughs> that's a fun environment. And at Wayne state, they do, they do a good job. And, uh, but th- those have been really fun to go to again, should have a story soon um, related to a Piston in the organization and a, a, a drive player as well. So, uh, keep your eyes out for that. Just a reminder to keep watch for us on social media. Obviously, you can follow us on Twitter at Palace of Pistons uh, on Instagram, where we're not always as active, but we're working on it at Palace Pistons. Uh, we got a, a Facebook page. We've got all that good stuff, but primarily on Twitter. We're part of that Pistons Twitter community that is sometimes a not very fun place to be, but we try to bring you good stuff that is fun. Strong sales pitch. Yeah. <laughs> Man, um, 
No, yeah, absolutely. My degree is going to be in. Hey, man. Um, look, I know I will be keeping an eye out for that article. Very much looking forward to it. I highly recommend our listeners and followers do the same. Um, we are going to be following the cruise all season, so should not be the last one of those kind of profiles that we will be bringing you this season. And we're very, very excited to do so. Like Aaron said, follow us on social media. Uh, follow us on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, um, wherever you get your podcasts from. We are there. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That's all I have for this week, Aaron. Thank you so much for joining me on yet another edition of the Palace of Pistons podcast. We will see you next week, hopefully with a little bit better news. Take care.